turn up your radio. Westwood One presents the Dr. Demento Show. Two hours of mad music and crazy comedy from out of the archives and off the wall. Rare records and outrageous takes from yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Lots of fun this week. We'll have a bunch of songs about Gumby and other green people. Also some fun songs about computer nerds. Weird and wonderful stuff by Camper Van Beethoven and Bob and Doug McKenzie and George Carlin will raid his icebox once again. Now, Thanksgiving is coming soon, and we'll celebrate that in our own demented way with Stan Freeberg, Steve Allen, and more funny people. And, of course, we'll have the Funny Five Countdown featuring the most demanded dementia of the week. We'll get started in just a moment with an Italian meal served up by Weird Al Yankovici. Funny songs for fun people, the Dr. Demento Show. I've got a stuffy nose, a sore throat, a bad cough, and a big game tomorrow. If I'm going to make it to the Football Hall of Fame, first I better go to the Halls of Medicine. The Halls of Medicine. Halls Cough Suppressant Tablets. Used as directed, Halls Mentholiptus soothes a sore throat, helps stop a cough, and Halls Vapor Action Formula makes a stuffy nose feel clearer fast. Halls Cough Suppressant Tablets. The Halls of Medicine. Try spearmint flavor, too. I ate a hamburger smothered with onions, and then I went around the office to see how people would react to my breath. There was no mistake how my secretary felt. That does it, I quit. The accounting department saw me coming and took off for the billing department. Oh, oh, then I took a Chlorettes. Only Chlorettes has Actazol with chlorophyll to get rid of bad breath fast. When my secretary saw me again, she rushed up to me and said, Hi, I'm back. Want me to type something? How about I make you some copies? How many copies do you want? Need coffee? Chlorettes gets rid of bad breath fast. Dr. Demento! <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
29 and still flipping burgers for a living? Or maybe you're a middle management executive, the office cut-up who keeps the secretaries in stitches. A real fun guy. You recently won a joke-off contest at the local comedy club, so now you think you're ready for the big time. Carson or Letterman. But you don't know how to get there? Well, your troubles are over. Because the Comedy Institute can get you out of that rut and working in the stand-up comedy business. And you don't even have to be funny or talented. At the Comedy Institute, all the standard premises are covered. We know that formula works. Stock lines are the key to success. We'll teach you a stock airline joke, a stock fat joke, a stock ethnic joke, a stock stock market joke, and some classic bathroom humor, like the one where you run out of toilet paper and waddle around on stage. Even if you're not fat, black, Jewish, or a ticked-off chick, or even a white guy with a big nose and a bad attitude, the stand-up comedy business is always looking for people. People who are irresponsible, immature, and don't mind being road animals. Our expert staff will teach you the art of trashing motel rooms, stealing towels, toilet paper, other comics material, and if you're male, hitting on the club's waitresses. What the heck if you're female, too? Remember, you don't need talent to make money in the stand-up comedy business because the demand has greatly outgrown the supply. That's right, there are more rooms to work today than there are competent people to work them. Act now, and the Comedy Institute will give you absolutely free two stock heckler lines like... That's why animals eat their young. And this is what happens when the fetus doesn't get enough oxygen. Order today and you'll receive, hey, I don't go to 7-Eleven and turn off the Slurpee machine when you're working. For a free consultation, call 1-783-252-5653. That's one steal a joke. Andy Warhol once said, everyone will be famous for 15 minutes. At the Comedy Institute, after we cash your check, of course, we say, hey, Everyone's a comedian. So call today, order today, change your life, do something with yourself, and quit lying around like a lazy butthead. I'd be content to carry away Davy's guitar case all day and all of the night.
now that the Kinks are in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, I thought we'd serenade him with the song Roadie for the Kinks by the Nance. With Rookie Phenom, title song from their new album, Weird Al Yankovic opened up with Lasagna, and then Jerry Persio did that bit about the Comedy Institute. Now, here's a song about something a lot of roadies find useful from time to time. It's a lubricating oil that comes in a spray can. Greg Keeler of Bozeman, Montana wrote a polka about it, and here it is on the Dr. Demento Show. <laughs> Have your bolts frozen up and gotten stuck on your nuts? Are your hinges all rusted and brown? Do you sweat and perspire when you change a flat tire? Cause their lug nuts are stuck all around. Well, don't worry, my friend, with this petroleum blend, your troubles will all be drowned. Yes, just weep at that WD-40 and hose that sucker down. Truckers and waitresses, here is a tip for those truck stop rendezvous. You might smell like you've died, but you just can't decide what the odor and to use. Well, I've got a hairspray, perfume, and cologne rolled up in one air, so can. Yes, just whip out that WD-40 for their perfect one-night stand. Something is wrong with the bubble machine. Somebody come over here, it seems to be stuck. Good, Ollie, good. I think you got it there. Just give me the WD-40. Oh, look, bubbles, more bubbles than you can count. This is wonderful. I love the bubbles and the way they look. Thank you so much, WD-40. You can silence a gate or enhance fishing bait with this handy dandy spray. Fix their swing on your porch or devise a blowtorch and melt all your troubles away. It won't make a mess and it smells like success when it's at your fingertips. Yes, just whip out the WD-40 and fetch me those vice grips. The WD-40 Polka, Greg Keeler on the Dr. Demento Show from his splendid new cassette called Nuclear Dioxin Queen. A lot of neat songs on that tape. We'll hear one about computers a little bit later on. Alan Sherman, Camper Van Beethoven, and some famous cartoon voices coming up next. I ate a pizza with anchovies and then went around the house to see how the family would react to my breath. My mother was very uncooperative. Oh, you step one foot in this room and I'll pull your arms off. My dog wasn't much better. <laughs> then... I took a Chlorette's. Only Chlorette's has Actazol with chlorophyll to get rid of bad breath fast. My mother came running out of her room, grabbed me and said, Such a good boy, let me clean your room. <laughs> Chlorette's gets rid of bad breath fast. I'm making my summation in court today. <clears throat> now I've got a sore throat, cough, and stuffy nose. On my way to the halls of justice, I think I'll stop in the halls of medicine. The halls of medicine. Hall's cough suppressant tablets. Used as directed, Hall's mentholiptus soothes a sore throat, helps stop a cough. And Hall's vapor action formula makes a stuffy nose feel clearer fast. Hall's cough suppressant tablets. The halls of medicine. Try ice blue flavor, too. Ah, we have a call on the request line. 1-900-BANANAS. Hello, Dr. Demento. This is Barry Scarf. I'm calling from San Francisco, and I've been getting increasingly demented with you over the years on KFOG. And, Doctor, in tribute to Jay Ward, one of the few people on TV ever to respect the intelligence of kids or anyone else, please play the Bullwinkle rap. Now here's something we hope you'll really like. Hey, Rocky! Hey, Rocky! Does Rocky have something up his sleeve? Uh, up my sleeve, uh, up my sleeve. Hey, Rocky. Does Rocky have something up his sleeve? Uh, 
son. Tom, Tom, the Piper's son, stole a pig and away he... Oop. Police officer, what do you got in the bag? It's a sort of a pig. You got a permit to pack a pig? Well, no, I... Better come along with us. You know it's a felony to pack a pig over a state line? No. Pig napping. But it's a pig in a poem. What a pig in a poke, huh? A poke, poem, pig in a poem. Pig poem. But it's okay, just about... You making fun of the way we talk? No, but it's catching. Name? I'm Tom, Tom, the Piper's son. All right, Piper's son, what were you going to do with the pig? Well, the poem says the pig was eat, but... Don't eat it, huh? No. On a platter, huh? No. Apple in its mouth like that? Certainly not. All right, Piper's son, you can go, but don't leave Tom. Thanks. Can I have my pig back? No. Evidence. Darn. One more thing, Piper's son. What's that? You got an apple on you? Boom, boom, boom. Get 
Oh, that was the very first college and underground radio hit for a band that's had a whole lot of them. Now they're almost overground. Camper Van Beethoven on the Dr. Demento Show. Hey Rocky by Boris Badenough. Not an official J. Ward production, but a lot of folks have enjoyed it since it came out a couple of years ago. And from the now very hard-to-find original Rocky and Friends album, Bill Scott, the voice of Bullwinkle and Bullwinkle's Poetry Corner. The next song is the subject of this week's trivia question. If you know the answer, call 1-900-BANANAS and enter the trivia contest. Or write to us at 8033 Sunset Boulevard, Los Angeles, California, 90046. Correct answers will go into the drawing for a prize. This week it's a Dr. Demento compact disc. The song's by Alan Sherman, famous for his parodies. The question is, what song is this a parody of? Alan Sherman. When I was a lad, I went to Yale, and I knew then that I could never fail, for I studied very hard, and furthermore, I polished up the apple for the professor. You polished up the apple for the professor. I polished up the apple so frequently, that soon I had a Phi Beta Kappa key. He soon had a Phi Beta Kappa key from polishing the apple very frequently. On graduation day, I made a stop at a very exclusive clothing shop. I opened up a charge account and asked them for the best gray flannel in the clothing store. The best gray flannel in the clothing store. That suit was a part of a great intrigue, for it proved I was a member of the Ivy League. It was part of a great intrigue, for it proved he was a member of the Ivy League. Then I got a crew cut and a sincere tie, and for my first job I did apply. A job in an advertising agency, sharpening the pencils of a big VP. Oh, I owned a lot of pencils for a big VP. I sharpened all the pencils so pointedly, that now I am a partner in the agency. He sharpened all the pencils so pointedly. I kept my ears open and my big mouth shut And I learned all the agency scuttlebutt I learned who was going out with whom And who had the keys to the powder room And who had the keys to the powder room For the key to the powder room, you see Is the key to the structure of the agency The keys to the powder room I worked real hard for the dear old firm. I learned most every advertising term. I said to the men in the dark gray suits, let's run it up the flagpole and see who salutes. Let's run it up the flagpole and see who salutes. I ran it up the flagpole perfectly. So now I am a partner in the agency. He ran it up the flagpole perfectly. So now he is a partner in the agency. Now I have a big office at the end of the hall with very fancy carpeting from wall to wall. I keep my mouth open and I keep my ears shut And I've got a little palace in Connecticut So I thank old Yale And I thank the Lord And I also thank my father who was chairman of the board This is how the story goes Was always nice to Santa What of Santa's special dose? Santa, you look great! And that suit you got on, did you lose a few pounds since last Christmas? Oh, maybe just a few pounds. Would you like to sleep inside tonight, Rudolph? Gee, uh, sure. Thanks, Santa. All of the other reindeer Used to laugh and call him names But that didn't stop old Rudolph from playing in his brown nose games. Here, Santa, I alphabetized all the kids' names on the list this year. Here you go. Oh, thanks, little buddy. Here, have some more reindeer chow. Why, I don't mind if I do. Then one smoggy Christmas Eve, Rudolph came to say, Santa, if I wash your sleigh, can I stay inside all day? Now all the other reindeer are jealous of old Rudolph's ways. Just as the smart deer told them, being nice to Santa pays. Santa, I couldn't get anybody to help me, but I loaded up the sleigh, pressed your suit, and shined your boots, too. Why, thanks, Rudy. You know, you should leave my sleigh this year. Gee, yeah, what did you think of that? Well, if you work in an office, you may have run into Rudolph's two-legged equivalents, Rudolph the Brown-Nosed Reindeer by Rudy and the Reindeer, and on a somewhat similar subject, When I Was a Lad by Alan Sherman. Oh, by the way, the answer to the trivia question from two weeks ago, Larry Storch starred in the TV series called F Troop. 
We'll be back with some computer comedy on the Westwood One Radio Network, but right now, yes, Dementites and Dementoids, there's a new way to help you get demented and stay demented all week long, and all you need is a telephone. It's 900 Bananas, the world's first and only demented hotline. When you dial 1-900-BANANAS, you'll get me, Dr. D, with a list of demented items you can choose from. You can hear highlights of each week's Dr. Demento show, including a recap of the Funny Five and my pick of the week. You can answer our weekly trivia contest and win some demented prizes, or you can ask me a question. In fact, when you call 1-900-BANANAS, we'll give you each week my secret office hours, when you can call and talk to me live and in person. You can find out where the Dr. Demento show is broadcast anywhere in the USA and learn how you can join the Demento Society. And you can also use 1-900-BANANAS to order albums, tapes, and other goodies at special prices. All this and 1-900-BANANAS is also now our new request line, where you can make a request to hear your favorite demented tunes right here on the show. So, call anytime, same low price, day or night, just one twenty-five for the first minute and 85 cents per minute after that. That's 1-900-BANANAS. 1-900-226-2627. 1-900-BANANAS, the world's only demented hotline. I'm about to deliver a lecture on Shakespeare. Hard enough to deal with my students, much less a stuffy doze, sore throat, and cough. Perhaps these sacred halls can lead me to the halls of medicine. The halls of medicine. Hall's cough suppressant tablets. Used as directed, Hall's mentholiptus soothes a sore throat, helps stop a cough, and Hall's vapor action formula makes a stuffy nose feel clearer fast. Hall's cough suppressant tablets. The Hall's of medicine. Try cherry flavor, too. I ate a slice of garlic bread, and then I boarded a bus to see how my fellow passengers would react to my breath. Oh, let me off! Let me off! The bus driver was the only one who'd speak to me. Okay, lady, out of the bus. Then I took a Clorex. Only Clorex has Actazole with chlorophyll to get rid of bad breath fast. An unusually attractive man got on then and walked up to me and said, Is the seat next to you taken? Clorex gets rid of bad breath fast. Once again, here's Greg Keeler. Well, our wedding was high-tech, or my life was wrecked. We synthesized an organ and a flute. Instead of holy men, they rolled in an IBM, and it asked, do you or do you not compute? I bought her flowers for her hair and lacy underwear. Learn Pascal and basic just for her. When she showed me her spreadsheet, our program was complete. You should have heard my hardware start to whir. But she's gone waltzing off to Texas with some hacker out of Reno who just nibbled Hera's software on a dime store floppy disk. She called him user friendly, then pulled out a gun to end me, shot the mouse right off my apple when she missed. Years back, I took her from her mom when I returned from Vietnam. She upgraded all my systems just to pull the plug on me. Now, whether Lisa Mac or PC, all I see is charging VC. I don't even have to log on, no siree. Guess with her haze micromodem, she'd seduce and then download them. Her interface could print the chrome right off a trailer hitch. She said that I was sexist, a complete Oedipus Rexist. In short, I was one lost son of a bitch. Till she went waltzing off to Texas with that hacker out of Reno who just nibbled Hera's software on a dime store floppy disk. She called him user friendly, then pulled out a gun to end me, shot the mouse right off my apple when she missed. Said her input output was online. But I was totally dismayed when she bragged about his K and said his bit looked like a bite compared to mine. So she's gone waltzing off to Texas with that hacker out of Reno who just nibbled Hera's software on a dime store floppy disk. She called him user friendly, then pulled out a gun to end me, shot the mouse right off my apple when she missed. Shot the mouse right off my apple when she missed. You see a red sign inside of the mall that says electronic store. It's the Radio Shack! Radio Shack, yeah, yeah. I'm running down my Radio Shack batteries. Can't use my calculator. Or even worse, my vibrator. I got me a computer. 
this gets hard at a Radio Shack sale. I don't got a life. I don't got a lady. I'm a dork. My best friend's a TRS-80. The Radio Shack is a nerdy little place Meters, join the battery club at Radio Shack. Well, he don't need a girl, got a metal detector. He don't need a condom, got a pocket protector. My power is dropping, but I can go shopping because the new catalog came in today. Say what? Slide rule! Busted. Shack Guns and Moses, that unreleased tape is our pick of the week, which means you and your friends can hear it all the way through anytime between November 20th and 26th by calling 1-900-BANANAS. And we had Greg Keeler with Talking Interface Blues from his cassette album called Nuclear Dioxin Queen. Now here's an old favorite from Nerdland, it's Steve Lehman and EGAD with the Rappin' Nerd. Funky! Uh, excuse me, what'd you say? I said funky! Oh, yeah. I wonder if that's spelled with a uh, F or a P-H. Yeah, man, my name is Grand Blaster, Funky the Funk, and I'm the baddest old rapper inside of Pope Dunk. Listen for a minute, man, you can see just how easy this rapping can be. Uh, excuse me, hey, I can rap. Uh, you know, I, I studied at Juilliard. In fact, the very beat you're using dates back to the Croatian man of the pre-Panasonic era. It's rather barbaric. Hey, shut up, dude, and listen instead for a slap you upside your nasty head. Now, here's the way, man, we play the game. You got to come up with a rapping name. Oh, I see. Okay, uh, well, my, my name is Monty. Monty? Monty. Okay, Monte, let's make a deal, man. Go ahead and give me that punky spiel. Oh, uh, thank you very much there, Mr. Sand Blaster. It's Grand Blaster. Grand Blaster, man. Don't be jacking with my name. Oh, all right. Thank you, Mr. G uh, Glad Blaster. It's Grand Blaster, hey, man. Uh, here we go. Yeah, here we ready? This is really a thrill. Give me a pickle and make it a deal. <laughs> make it a deal? That's <laughs> <My> rhythm. <laughs> gotta be kidding me, man. Hey! Go hit you with a crowbar, send you home to mommy. This ain't no deli, you see any salami? Uh, well, you know, actually, you've got a very valid point there. Listen, Monty, got the $90 tie and a $20 suit. My sister's in jail and I lost one boot. Got rockets in my pockets and dips in my hips. Love Gladys Knight, but I can't stand the pimp. Oh, now, hold on just a minute. That's very unfair. You know, they're underrated. I, I personally love the pimps. As a matter of fact, they really know how to uh, bougie down. Oh, Monty, you are lost in space, man. Just shut up. Oh, no, wait, wait, wait. I, I feel it. I feel it. I think I'm ready to rap right now. Oh, yeah, this I gotta hear. All right, go ahead, man. Lay it on me. Uh, yeah. mm, da, da. I'm as groovy as a record and clean as your spleen. I'm a nifty kind of guy, and my underwear is clean. See, because my mom bleaches this stuff. It's real clean. Oh, no. Forget it. Let's just call it off. Oh, I'm... oh no, please, please. Wait a minute. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. Shake it. Uh, now shake it. Uh, grab your chicken and bake it. <laughs> grab your chicken and bake it. <laughs> Stand this guy. Shut your face, you hopeless case. I can't believe this guy. Hey, maybe I'll teach you to scratch. <laughs> Say scratch. Say scratch. Say scratch it. Take the needle. You put it down. Go back and forth. That the record go round. Scratch it. Scratch it. Come on, Monty. Scratch it. Like this. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Excuse me, stop that. You know, it's very bad for the stylist. They really suffer from the abrasive vector force motion. Say what? Uh, and it's very bad for the needle. Oh, the needle. I can't believe it. Shut your mouth, you little twit, because the scratching thing is really it. Now scratch it. <laughs> scratch it. <laughs> Take the needle and scratch it. Oh, well, okay. I'll, I'll try anything once. No. Uh -huh. no. Hey, hey. Hey, you're right. Uh -huh. I like this. This is really sweet. Oh, man. This is bad for your Nita. 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 Call us nerds, cause we're so uncool They laugh at our 
from the past there, Revenge of the Nerds by the Ruben Ooze. Kevin Keeney of Augustana College in Sioux Falls, South Dakota gets a Dr. Nemeno t-shirt for his letter requesting that movie theme from 1984. And we had Steve Lehman and EGAD with the rapping nerd. We bring him back alive on the Dr. Nemento show every week. Songs about Gumby and other green people coming up next. I ate a hamburger smothered with onions and then I went around the office to see how people would react to my breath. There was no mistake how my secretary felt. That does it, I quit. The accounting department saw me coming and took off for the billing department. Then I took a Chlorettes. Only Chlorettes has Actazol with chlorophyll to get rid of bad breath fast. When my secretary saw me again, she rushed up to me and said, Hi, I'm back. Want me to type something? How about I make you some copies? How many copies do you want? Need coffee? Chlorettes gets rid of bad breath fast. I've got a stuffy nose, a sore throat, a bad cough, and a big game tomorrow. If I'm going to make it to the Football Hall of Fame, first I better go to the Halls of Medicine. The Halls of Medicine. Halls Cough Suppressant Tablets. Used as directed, Halls Mentholiptus soothes a sore throat, helps stop a cough, and Halls Vapor Action Formula makes a stuffy nose feel clearer fast. Halls Cough Suppressant Tablets. The Halls of Medicine. Try Spearmint Flavor, too. I have a new album here called Gumby. A bunch of different artists do new songs inspired by the legendary green person. People like Dweezil and Moon Unit Zappa, Frank Sinatra Jr., Sly and Robbie, Flo and Eddie, Jonathan Richmond, Brave Combo. Very eclectic mix, just the way I like it. Here's the Ballad of Gumby, sung by Rick Shulman. He rode out of the west with a star on his chest and he tried his best to make it stay. In the heat of the day, ten stars won't stick to clay, but what the hay, he rode on anyway. He was Gumby. Little green Gumby. 
He was a hell of a gun, but the hot midday sun was a burning, dirty and mean. And it's harder to shoot when your gun's hot to boot and your hand's custom green plasticine like Gumby's. Well, word got around when he rode into town and soon it spread to the local saloon. And the message was clear when it got to the ear of a bad guy named Soggy Lagoon. Now the goon was so tough he chewed cactus and stuff and used a rattlesnake bull whip for floss. He wasn't intimidated by anyone animated and he aimed to show Gumby who's boss. He aimed to show Gumby. I hear you got feet of clay, Gumby heard Lagoon Bray. I hear you're putty, you're soft, and what's more? I'll flatten you, said Lagoon, and say, Marshall Cartoon, that's the dumbest looking horse I ever saw. And the whole saloon started to roar. That little green Gumby. You can laugh and joke, Gumby smiled as he spoke, but don't you pick on my pony pal Pokey. Lagoon jumped to his feet, said, Meet me out in the street. Gumby obliged with a curt okie dokie. In that hot, dusty town, folks gathered around for about to take place was a showdown. Sixty paces away stood the Marshal of Clay, who Lagoon was a fix and a mow down. It was Gumby. Now Lagoon looked real mean and Gumby well green on the scene of that duel in the sun. But not to be beaten, Lagoon took to cheating and before the word draw drew his gun on the little green Gumby. The town was struck silent by the action so violent as Gumby fell to the dusty old street. The only sound Hey guys, could you keep it down? Was the love dove of a tiny clay heartbeat. It was Gumby's love dove. The folks turned toward Lagoon, and in a huddle they soon ran him clear out of town on a pole. And though they were trying, the kids couldn't stop crying. Cause in Gumby's ten gallon hat was a big bullet hole. Little green Gumby. Little green Gumby. But then up something popped and the crying just stopped and as the dust settled there in the street, like a bad episode from the twilight zone, it was Gumby back on his feet. Gumby coughed a tiny cough, then he dusted himself off and said, Folks, I'm really okay. Lagoon missed me today, his shot went this away, but my head slopes that away. Yeah. Greetings, Kermit the Frog here, and today I'd like to tell you a little bit about the color green. Uh, do you know what's green? Well, I am, for one thing. You see, frogs are green, and I'm a frog, and that means I'm green, you see? It's not that easy being green. Having to spend each day the color of the leaves. When I think it could be nicer being red or yellow or gold or something much more colorful like that it's not easy being green it seems you blend in with so many other ordinary things and people tend to pass you over because you're not standing out like flashy sparkles in the water or stars in the sky. But green's the color of spring. And green can be cool and friendly-like. 
and green can be big, like an ocean, or important, like a mountain, or tall like a tree. When green is all there is to be, it could make you wonder why. But why wonder, why wonder? I am green, and it'll do fine. It's beautiful, and I think it's what I want to be. In the valley of the jolly, oh, oh, oh. The can of beans. And he lives down in his valley. Russell Sprout. The cat stands tall and green. Image. Well, he ain't no prize, and there's no women his size. And that's why the cat's so mean. One day he lived his valley path. I mean to say, this cat was mad. Now looking round, he wasn't gone long. And then he ran into an Amazon. Well, this changed his whole complexion. Broccoli. He had never seen such beautiful sight. For it, he looked at her, and she looked at him, and she almost passed out from fright. He looked at her, thought, what a dilly. He touched her once, she slapped him silly. This was something he had never sensed. He looked at her, as she commenced, now listen, pal, this ain't no flu. I can't see going with the big green coop. You've heard about the jolly green giant. Hey, Don't let his troubles cross your mind. Sorry, Fox. He couldn't get Sally, so went back to his valley. The cat was colorblind. <laughs> Songs about green people on the Dr. Demento Show, The Jolly Green Giant by the Kingsmen, and Jim Henson as Kermit the Frog singing about being green from an early Sesame Street album. That kind of tickles a nostalgic nerve or two. And something brand new, The Ballad of Gumby by Rick Shulman from the Gumby album, which of course has a solid green cover. Well, this next guy is not green outside, but seeing as how he's famous for his excessive consumption of soggy green can leafy vegetables, he must be solid chlorophyll inside. Oh, olive oil, olive oil. Was me spinach, was me spinach. My, oh, my, Popeye, but you're eating too much spinach. <laughs> well, blow me down. Is that right, Popeye? Eat all this spinach to make those big muscles? Nah, taste so. I am what I am on account of I eat me spinach. <laughs> oh, I'm Popeye the Sailor Man. <laughs> Popeye the Sailor Man. Now I am what I am, and that's all what I am. I'm Popeye the Sailor Man. Now I'm one of Kazookas, what hates all Kalookas, what hates on the ups and swear. Boy, I biff some and puff some and always out rub some, but none of them gets nowhere. Now if anyone dashes I'll risk my fist, it's buff and it's wham, understand? So keep good behavior, it's your one lifesaver with Popeye the Sailor Man. Oh, I'm Popeye the Sailor Man. <laughs> Popeye the Sailor Man. Boy, I am what I am, and that's all what I am. I'm Popeye the Sailor Man. Oh, 
I pop by the sailor man. I pop by the sailor man. We have strong to the finish, cause I eat me spinach. I pop by the sailor Popeye the Sailor Man, Billy Costello, the original voice of Popeye in that 1935 recording. Well, spinach may indeed be good for you, but it's turkey. We celebrate around this time of year Thanksgiving and other moments of dementia, plus the funny five coming up in the second hour of the Dr. Demento Show on the Westwood One Radio Network. I'm making my summation in court today. <clears throat> now I've got a sore throat, cough, and stuffy nose. On my way to the halls of justice, I think I'll stop in the halls of medicine. The halls of medicine. Hall's cough suppressant tablets. Used as directed, Hall's mentholiptus soothes a sore throat, helps stop a cough. And Hall's vapor action formula makes a stuffy nose feel clearer fast. Hall's cough suppressant tablets. The halls of medicine. Try ice blue flavor, too. I ate a pizza with anchovies and then went around the house to see how the family would react to my breath. My mother was very uncooperative. <laughs> You step one foot in this room and I'll pull your arms off. My dog wasn't much better. <laughs> then I took a Clorets. Only Clorets has Actazol with chlorophyll to get rid of bad breath fast. My mother came running out of her room, grabbed me and said, Such a good boy, let me clean your room. <laughs> Clorets gets rid of bad breath fast. Dr. Evento! I love your elbows, your knees, your knuckles too. I love your nostrils, your dentures when you chew. I love your bunions, your boils and warts, it's true because you're you. I thrill for hours to hear you waddle by. When you start belching, my heart begins to fly. I love your earwax and spinal cracks, it's true because you're you. No one else will do. I just adore your open running sores, the little stains that say I love you too. Your moldy breath is like a kiss of death, save them all from me, I beg you do. No one else can dribble quite like you. I love your dandruff, your scaly ears and more. I love the earthquake that happens when you snore. I love your goiters and blisters, yes it's true because you're you. No one else will do My love so feminine Whenever you break wind The neighbors scream and scatter by the score Each time you sneeze You start a new disease You always do the things that I adore No one else on earth could ask for more I love your odor and the hair between your toes I love your glass eye and the things inside your nose I love your drooling, no fooling, yes it's true because you're you Just because you're you No one else will do Just because you're you Because you're you by the duh on the Dr. Demento Show. We'll have our Thanksgiving celebration in just a moment. But before we get to the food section, assuming for the moment that this radio program is a newspaper, here we come to the pop music critic giving us his opinion on a certain kind of music that's real big today with a lot of people, but not with him. Here's John Cleek. A little nap when my ears beheld a bunch of syncopated crap oozing through the window, tripping on my head. I was dancing on my pillow, I was freaking in my bed. Syncopated crap, syncopated crap, a syncopated c c c c c c c crap. Had a lot of rhythm, had a lot of rhyme, had a mother load of soul, cause a machine was keeping time. The bass was pounding nails, the DBs they was dying. Never mind, it had no melody or harmony or anything resembling artistic quality. It was syncopated crap. Syncopated crap. Syncopated cuss. Rap cuss. Rap cuss. Take 
takes a lot of talent to talk this way. Just plugging in the beatbox, seems to take an MBA. Scratching and a breaking and a hollering and a hooting, making Tiffany look like Sir Isaac Newton. Sir Isaac Newton. 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 No, 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 Hi, Whimsical Will here with a Thanksgiving edition of the Demented News. Ah, oh, yes, Thanksgiving, the time to... And on the Demented menu, instead of turkey, Dimensions and Dementoids will be serving... Or even deciding to... And trade them in for a hefty helping of... And while some may be eating a... For others, it's... Time for Spud. Oh, Spud! Filled with the full, rich flavor of potato. And to complement our main course, you can choose from... Peanut butter cake and dry curdled milk and crust of pie, rotting melons, dried up mustard, eggshells mixed with lemon custard, cold french fries, and rancid meat, yellow lumps of cream of wheat. And for dessert, substitute the usual... For a scrumptious slice of... Mustard pie. Oh, uh, but remember what happened last year. Last Thanksgiving, I was thrilled. You ate so much, you killed your living girdle. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, Thanksgiving Thank you. is also the Thank time to give thanks. Thank you. Thank you, baby. So let's take our microphone to the streets to find out what you're thankful for. Thank God I'm a country boy. Thank God it's... Thanks for the memory. And thank you for listening. This is Whimsical Will for the Demented News. Uh, thank you very much. I love you. I love you. I love you. Whimsical Will with the Demented News. Much more fun than most newspapers. Before that, John Cleek and a tape he sent me from North Hollywood, California called Syncopated Crap. Syncopations being musical accents between the beats. Very important to many kinds of music, uh, including rap. But back to our Thanksgiving celebration. Stan Freeberg's History of the United States of America, recently re-released on CD, includes his story of the first Thanksgiving. November 1621. By now, the white man has arrived in great numbers, not only at Miami, but at Jamestown, at Plymouth, and at Salem, Massachusetts. The Puritans have established a thriving colony, enjoying all the social and cultural refinements of a modern society. Hi, you Harv. Who are you taking to the witch burning Saturday night? Uh, Prudence Adams. Who are you taking to the Rotary Club luncheon? I haven't got a date yet, but I hear it's going to be quite a spread. Well, Mayor Pennypacker, how's it look for re-election? Great, great, great. Never looked better. Yeah, what about the Indian vote? What do you mean by that? Well, you're not too popular with the Indians. They could lose you the election. That's possible? Well, they outnumber us. Yeah, that's the trouble. You give them an inch and they take over. But, Mayor, they were here before we were. We moved in on them. So he did. Well, there's just something about them. They wear funny shoes. They don't even have buckles on them. Be that as it may, election is Friday. You better make some gesture this week. Like what? Well, how about if you make a concession and pick an Indian as a running mate? You'd be sure to carry the Indian block. What? Anything happened to me? You'd have a mayor that wasn't a Puritan. He'd probably take orders directly from Chief Powhatan. Yeah. Say, I got it. The big luncheon tomorrow. The one under the trees. What about it? We'll ask an Indian. That'll impress the rest of them. We could even announce you're going to put one in your cabinet. No need to go that far. Just have one to lunch. It'll be great press. Mayor Pennypacker comes out for equality. Justice. Votes. What a slogan. Take an Indian to lunch this week. Show him we're a regular bunch this week. Show him we're as liberal as can be. Let him know he's almost as good as we Make a feathered friend feel fed this week Overlook the fact he's red this week Let him share our Quaker oats Cause he's useful when he votes Take an Indian 
colon. Two, four, six, eight. Who do we tolerate? Indians, Indians. Ra, ra, ra. Take an Indian to lunch this week. Let him sit right down and munch this week. Let's give in and all do the brotherhood bit. Just make sure we don't make a habit of it. Take an Indian to dine this week. Show him we don't draw the line this week. We know everyone can't be as American as we. After all, we came over on the Mayflower. Take an Indian. Not a wooden Indian, but a real life Indian to lunch. Needless to say, the luncheon there under the trees was a great success, and a good time was had by Puritans and Indian alike. Everything came off beautifully with the exception of one minor catastrophe. What do you mean you cooked the turkey, Charlie? Well, I cooked the turkey, that's all. You put our national bird in the oven, is that correct? Yeah, well, I... And all uh, of us uh, had our mouth set for roast eagle with all the trimming. Yeah, well, I... Uh, you uh, did a thing like well, that? Well, the two birds were lying there side by side. The turkey was for the centerpiece, Charlie. I mean... Well, they looked so much alike well, that I... Well, uh, we blew it uh, now. They're all sitting down at the table out there. Yeah, yeah. Started on their little nut cups already. Just have to switch the birds, that's all. Yeah, well... Serve them turkey instead of eagle. But it's kind of scrawny looking, isn't it? Yeah, well, I thought I'd stuff some old bread in it and make it look a little fatter. You do that, okay? Okay. Stan Freeberg on the Dr. Demento Show from his album Stan Freeberg Presents the United States of America, the early years, which takes it up through the Revolutionary War. Jeff Port of Los Angeles wrote in to ask me, did Stan Freeberg ever bring his history of the United States up to date? Well, no, Jeff, that's all there is, and this is why. Stan got a deal to make his album into a Broadway show, which was intended to bring it up to date, but part of the deal was he could not make any more albums till the show came out. Well, the show deal fell through, creative differences and all. Stan moved on to other things. You can read about it in his book, It Only Hurts When I Laugh. Jeff Port wins a Demento Society membership for his Ask the Doc letter. You can ask the doc by mail or by calling 1-900-BANANAS. More Thanksgiving comedy next. I ate a slice of garlic bread and then I boarded a bus to see how my fellow passengers would react to my breath. Oh, let me off, let me off. The bus driver was the only one who'd speak to me. Okay, lady, out of the bus. Then I took a Chlorette's. Only Chlorette's has Actazole with chlorophyll to get rid of bad breath fast. An unusually attractive man got on then and walked up to me and said, Is the seat next to you taken? Chlorette's gets rid of bad breath fast. I'm about to deliver a lecture on Shakespeare. Hard enough to deal with my students, much less a stuffy dose, sore throat, and cough. Perhaps these sacred halls can lead me to the halls of medicine. The halls of medicine. Halls cough suppressant tablets. Used as directed, Halls mentholiptus soothes a sore throat, helps stop a cough. And Halls vapor action formula makes a stuffy nose feel clearer fast. Halls cough suppressant tablets. The halls of medicine. Try cherry flavor too. Hi, we're the Bobs, and here's Dr. Demento. Yeah. Steve Allen's popular TV variety show in the early 60s had a regular feature where he interviewed people in the street who were actually regulars on the show, Louis Nye, Tom Poston, and Don Knotts. About this time uh, one year, it sounded like this. How will the average person spend Thanksgiving? Let's find out as we meet our first man in the street, and there he is... Yes, yes it's, it's Gordon Hathaway. It's Gordon Hathaway, the old gobbler. <laughs> I'm from Manhattan, and I'm the turkey in the gray flannel suit. Hi, ho, Steve Arino. Well, are you ready for tonight's question about Thanksgiving? Thanksgiving? Thanks a million. A million thanks to you. Oh, I've got to record soon, or it'll be too late. What do you mean, too late? My voice is changing. 
All right, here's the question, uh, Sonny, or Gordon. How are you going to spend Thanksgiving? Well, I expect to have a gasser of a big Thanksgiving dinner at Mother's. Oh, Mother's place in the country, huh? No, Mother's hash house on Third Avenue. <laughs> it's possible, yes. And here comes our next man on the street. Uh, your name, sir? My name is K.B. Morrison. I work in a munitions factory. I insert the firing pins and the hand grenades. <laughs> You say, uh, K.B. Morrison. Tell me, what does the K.B. stand for? Kaboom! <laughs> now, let's go back over this again. Just exactly, just exactly where do you work? I used to work at Explosives Incorporated. Oh, you're, you're not there anymore, huh? It isn't there anymore. <laughs> well, here's tonight's question, sir. How are you going to spend Thanksgiving? Uh, with my family, all five of them. Five of them? My goodness. Tell me, are they nervous? No, 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 no. I think I heard six there, didn't I? There's one on the way. I see. <laughs> I caught you. But the family is, uh, what are they having? What kind of a turkey? We're having a 45-pound turkey. 45 pound? My goodness, that's quite a meal. I know, but personally, I wouldn't go near it. Why not? It outweighs me. I see. <laughs> And here's our last... Here's our last man in the street. Your name, sir? Oh. <laughs> you know, fella, I'm getting pretty tired of this. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna just make up a name. Fred Anderson is your name. All right, now, what's your name? Fred Anderson. Good for you. Now, Fred, here's tonight's question. How are you going to spend Thanksgiving? Well, uh, some very good friends of mine invited me to dinner, but I don't think I can go. Why not? They don't know Fred Anderson. Oh, get out of here. <laughs> now, this is a true song, and I know it's a true song because I wrote it myself. I said to myself, self, I said, let's write a song about somebody. But who? What about a turkey? A turkey made it famous, came across on the Mayflower, got his picture on all the postcards. Your parents didn't make it famous, they just had you. And there's no day of the year named after you. So I said to myself, self, I said, what if your turkey don't want to come to Thanksgiving dinner? What are you gonna do, invite a Cornish hen? That wouldn't be right. Then it would be Cornish hen day and just think of the little bit of stuffing that you'd get. You have to cordially invite your turkey. Make him feel like he's wanted, like he's one of the boys. Let him know how much you want him to come over for your Thanksgiving dinner. Now, this is not Alice's restaurant. This is the Gobble Song, and for the Gobble Song, I need audience participation. Do I have audience participation? Back to that letter I was talking about. I figured if you're gonna have to cordially invite your turkey for Thanksgiving dinner, that letter should go something like this. Mr. Turkey, you're invited to my Thanksgiving party. RSVP by today. Mr. Turkey, what do you say? Gobble, 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 gobble. Gobble, 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 gobble. Gobble, 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 gobble. Gobble, gobble. My little brother likes all the white meat. My half-sister thinks dogs the right meat. Mr. Turkey, what are you saying? On Thanksgiving, we'll be praying. Gobble, 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 gobble. Gobble, 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 gobble. Gobble, 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 gobble. Gobble, gobble. Now, everybody, keep on gobbling. Don't stop because now's the only time you can gobble and look sane while doing it. Just think of how stupid you'll look when you're on a train, a plane, or even a bus, and you start to gobble. They'll think you're insane. You'll get protested, arrested, molested, and digested. So let's gobble. Gobble, 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 gobble. Gobble, gobble. Now, I've been known to do this song in a hideous world book of records. 
for 14 hours, 34 minutes, and 13 seconds. And I will break all records tonight if we all don't start gobbling. So let's gobble. One more time. Gobble, gobble, gobble. One more time. Now it's nice and loud. Gobble, 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 gobble. Gobble, gobble. Now the step, I lied that time. Ha <laughs> ha, I got all of you too. This is our last time around, so nice and loud. Jumping at the Barnyard by Frankie Maximum on the Dr. Demento Show, Jesse Bruce with a gobble song, and Steve Allen and friends with How Will the Average Person Spend Thanksgiving? Well, if you're listening to this show, you're obviously above average, but have a nice Thanksgiving anyway. The request line rings again, starting to sound like Christmas. one 900 bananas This is Kathy Heineke from Lexington Park, Maryland, and I listen to Dr. Demento on All Hit 98, and I would like to hear... The 12 Days of Christmas by Bob and Doug McKenzie. Okay, good day. This is our Christmas part of the album, and you can play this at your Christmas parties uh, or to yourself on Christmas Eve if there's nothing else to do. Good day, eh? Yeah. In case you thought, like, I wasn't on this part. Oh, I guarantee you, you'd be on. Okay, so good day. This is the Christmas part, and we're going to tell you what to get uh, your true love for Christmas. <laughs> Look out the window. Where? <laughs> what are you doing? Snow. What? Oh, it's a great white north, and it's snowing because it's Christmas time. Hey, Hoser. What? Uh, here's a quiz. Quiz for Duck. Okay, I have my thinking toque on. Yeah, right. What are the 12 days of Christmas? Just um, figure it out, right? Christmas is when? Uh, the 25th. Right, and what's the 24th? Christmas Eve, right? So that's, that's two. That's two. And then what's after that? Uh, Boxing uh, wrestling day. day. No, get Boxing out. day, yeah, yeah. That's three. I know. Then what's after that? Nothing. New Year's. Four, and what's New Year's Eve? Five. Okay. Where do you get 12? Uh, there's two Saturdays and Sundays in there. That's four. That's nine. And three other days, which I believe are the mystery days. Oh. Okay, now, this is our Christmas song. In case you don't know what to get somebody for Christmas. There's lots of ideas in here, so listen and don't get stuck. Okay. By the way, that's me on the organ. You start. Okay. On the first day of Christmas, my true love gave to me a beer. On the second day of Christmas, my true love gave to me two turtlenecks and a beer. Okay. On the third day of Christmas, my true love gave to me 
three French toast, two turtlenecks, and a beer. Okay, that should be more there, right? Where? Uh, go. Fourth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me four pounds of back bacon, three French toast, two turtlenecks, and a beer in a tree. See, oh, you need yeah. more. The fifth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me five gold toques. Four pounds of back bacon, three French toast, two turtlenecks, and a beer in a tree. Okay, on the sixth, two gold Christmas, my true love gave to me six packs of two for five gold toques. Four pounds of back bacon, three French toast, two turtlenecks, and a beer in a tree. Okay, okay. on the seventh day of Christmas, my true love gave to me. Seven packs of smoke. Nice gift. Oh, six packs of two gold. Five golden toots. Four pounds of bag making. Three French toast. Two turtlenecks. And a beer. In a tree. This should just be the two days of Christmas. It's too hard for us. Um, go, Holzer. Oh, the eight day of Christmas. Two of them gave to me. Eight comic books. Seven, seven packs of smoke. Six seven packs of two for five. Okay, day uh, 12. Good day, and welcome to day 12. Yeah. Five golden toots, four pounds of bag bacon, three French toast, two turtleneck, and a beer in a tree. What did you learn to do that, uh, Albert? Go on. So, like, that's our song. Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas, and good day. Good day. Everybody. Or on the 12th day, you could have gotten so me a dozen donuts. Go on to the you stores gone down and get some presents. Like a uh, good donut shop where if you buy a dozen, you get another one free. And that has been 13 for the 13 days of Christmas. Next Christmas, get me a chainsaw. Boy, that song is a beauty. It, it moved me. Yeah, I think it ranks up there with Stairway to Heaven. What? Bob and Doug McKenzie with the 12 Days of Christmas. That's been unavailable for a while, but now it lives again on the new compact disc called What Else? <coughs> Dr. Demento presents the greatest Christmas novelty CD of all time. Coming up, George Carlin and also the Funny Five on the Westwood One Radio Network. I've got a stuffy nose, a sore throat, a bad cough, and a big game tomorrow. If I'm going to make it to the Football Hall of Fame, first I better go to the Halls of Medicine. The Halls of Medicine, Hall's Cough Suppressant Tablets. Used as directed, Hall's Mentholiptus soothes a sore throat, helps stop a cough, and Hall's Vapor Action Formula makes a stuffy nose feel clearer fast. Hall's Cough Suppressant Tablets. The Halls of Medicine. Try spearmint flavor, too. I ate a hamburger smothered with onions, and then I went around the office to see how people would react to my breath. There was no mistake how my secretary felt. That does it. I quit. The accounting department saw me coming and took off for the billing department. <laughs> then I took a Chlorets. Only Chlorets has Actazole with chlorophyll to get rid of bad breath fast. When my secretary saw me again, she rushed up to me and said, Hi, I'm back. Want me to type something? How about I make you some copies? How many copies do you want? Need coffee? Chlorets gets rid of bad breath fast. I'm the icebox man at our house. I'm icebox man. I answer the call when there's a need at the icebox. Two very important responsibilities. The first one is keeping people from standing with the door to the refrigerator open for more than 45 minutes at a time. God, that gets me mad. You want to close that door, please? You want to close the door? You're letting out all of the coldness I saved overnight. Come on, close the door. You know, some guy smoked eight joints, and he's going to inventory my refrigerator. Um, um, uh... Here, here's $50. Get down to the Burger King. Where you got? I'll save more than that on electricity alone. Close the door, will you? Look, if you want to know what's in there, why don't you take a Polaroid picture and go away and look at the picture, and then come back and figure out what you want. Years ago, we didn't have Polaroid cameras. We had to make an oil painting of what was in there. 
down. I don't let it get me down. Because there's a bigger responsibility, and that is getting into that refrigerator and deciding which things need to be thrown away. Most people will not take that responsibility. Most people will just go and get what they want, leave everything else alone, and say, well, someone else wants that. Someone else will eat that. Meanwhile, the thing is getting smaller and smaller and smaller, and is, in fact, stuck to the rack. Well, I've got to go in there and decide when to throw things away. Chocolate pudding? Does anyone want this last chocolate pudding? I have just one chocolate pudding left. It's only pulled away from the side of the dish about three inches all the way around. And there's a huge fault running through the center of the pudding. Actually, it's nothing but a ball of skin at this point. Does anyone want a ball of fault-ridden chocolate pudding skin? I'm only going to throw it away. Do people do that with you? Offer you some food that if you don't eat it, they're only gonna throw it away. <laughs> well, doesn't that make you feel dandy? <laughs> Here's something to eat, Dave. Hurry up, it's spoiling. <laughs> something for you, Angela. Eat quickly, that green pot is moving. <laughs> Here, Bob, eat this before I give it to an animal. You ever been looking through the refrigerator and you come across an empty plate? <laughs> Boy, that starts me to wondering. Did something eat something else? <laughs> Maybe the olives ate the tuna. Maybe that chicken isn't really dead yet. Actually, I picture a little mouse with gloves and a parka on, you know. Just waiting for the lights to go out. <laughs> Perhaps the worst thing that can happen is to reach into the refrigerator and come out with something that you cannot identify <laughs> at all. You literally do not know what it is. Could be meat, could be cake. Usually at a time like that, I'll bluff. <laughs> Honey, is this good? <laughs> well, what is it? I don't know. I've never seen anything like it. It looks like meat cake. <laughs> well, smell it. It has absolutely no smell whatsoever. It's good. Put it back. Somebody is saving it. It'll turn up in something. That's what frightens me. That someone will consider it a challenge and use it just because it's in there. It's a leftover. What a sad word that is. Leftover. How would you like to be a leftover? Well, it wouldn't be bad if they were taking people out to be shot. I might even volunteer. But you know, leftovers make you feel good twice. Do you ever think about that? Leftovers give you two separate good feelings. When you first put them away, you feel really intelligent. I'm saving food. And then, after a month, when hair is growing out of them, and you throw them away, you feel really intelligent. I'm saving my life. <laughs> when you make a sandwich at home, do you reach down past the first three or four pieces of bread to go down and get the good bread? It's kind of a self-preservation thing, you know? What you're really saying is, let my family eat the rotten bread. I'll take care of numero uno. And down you go into the loaf, down looking for the two that you want, a matching pair. And you have to be careful pulling them out so they don't tear. And then when you get them to the top, the upper eight slices fall the other way. I never straighten them out. I think, screw it, let them think a burglar made a sandwich. <laughs> Not my job, straightening out the bread. Got to tell me, in the refrigerator, who is it, please, that puts into the refrigerator the half-gallon containers of milk with only that much left in them? 
I get one of those every time. Hey, here's some milk. God, not enough to drink. Better put that back, huh? I know my responsibility. Well, if you're like me, you'll be getting to know your icebox very well in the days right after Thanksgiving. That's George Carlin on the Dr. Demento Show. And now, Dimensions and Dementos, <laughs> what time is it? It's funny. <laughs> Once again, for the most requested, most demanded, demented discs and tapes, the funny five, and here is number five. Well, I had two weeks of vacation time coming after working all year down at Big Roy's Heating and Plumbing. So one night when my family and I were gathered round the dinner table, I said, kids, if you could go anywhere in this great big world now, where'd you like to go to? He said, Dad, we want to see the biggest bottle of twine in Minnesota. They picked the biggest bottle of twine in Minnesota. So the very next day we loaded up the car with potato skins and pickled wieners, crossword puzzles, Spider-Man comics, and Mama's homemade rhubarb pie. Pulled out of the driveway and the neighbors, they all waved goodbye. And so began our three-day journey. We picked up a guy holding a sign that said Twine Baller Bust. He smelled real bad and he said his name was Bernie. I put in a Slim Whitman tape, my wife put on a brand new hairnet. Kids were in the back seat, jumping up and down, yelling, are we there yet? And all of us were joined together in one common thought as we rolled down the long and winding interstate and off 53 to Soda. We're going to see the biggest bottle of twine in Minnesota. We're heading for the biggest bottle of twine in Minnesota. wait to get there so we drove straight through for three whole days and nights of course we stopped for more pickled wieners now and then the scenery was just so pretty boy i wish the kids could have seen it but you can't see out of the side of the car because the windows are completely covered with the decals from all the places where we've already been like Elvis Arama, the Tupperware Museum, the Bull Weevil Monument, Cranberry World, the Shuffleboard Hall of Fame, Poodle Dog Rock, and the Mecca of Albino Squirrels. We've been to Ghost Town Steam Parks, Wax Museums, and the place where you can drive through the middle of a tree scene, alligator farms, and tarantula ranches, but there's still one thing we gotta see. Well, we crossed the state line about 6.39, and we saw the sign that said Twine Ball Exit 50 Miles. Oh, the kids were so happy they started singing 99 bottles of beer on the wall for the 27th time that day. So we pulled off the road at the last chance gas station, got a few more pickled wieners and a diet chocolate soda. On our way to see the biggest bottle of twine in Minnesota. We're going to see the biggest bottle of twine in Minnesota. early Wednesday evening as the sun was setting in the Minnesota sky. Out in the distance on the horizon it appeared to me like a vision before my unbelieving eyes. We parked the car and walked with our filled reverence toward that glorious huge majestic sphere. I was just so overwhelmed by its sheer immensity. I had to pop myself a beer Yes, on these hallowed grounds Open 10 to 8 on weekdays In a little shrine under a makeshift pagoda There sits the biggest bottle of twine in Minnesota I tell you it's the biggest bottle of twine in Minnesota
walked up beside it and I warned the kids, now you better not touch it, those ropes are there for a reason. I said, maybe if you're good, I'll tie it to the back of our car and we can take it home. But I was only teasing. Then we went to the gift shop and stood in line, bought a souvenir miniature ball of twine, some window decals, and anything else they'd sell us. And I bought a couple postcards, greetings from the twine ball, wish you were here, won't the folks back home be jealous? I gave her camera to Bernie and we stood by the ball and we all gathered round and said cheese. Then Bernie ran away with my brand new Instamatic, but at least we got our memories. So we all just stared at the ball for a while and my eyes got moist, but I said with a smile, kids, this here's what America's all about. Then I started feeling kind of gooey inside and I fell on my knees and I cried and cried and that's when those security guards threw us out. You know, I bet if we unraveled that sucker, it'd roll all the way down to Fargo, North Dakota. Cause it's the biggest pot of twine in Minnesota. I'm talking about the biggest pot of twine in Minnesota. Well, we stayed that night at the Twine Ball Inn. In the morning, we were on our way home again. But we didn't really want to leave. That was perfectly clear. I said, folks, I can tell you're all sad to go. Then I winked my eye and I said, you know, I got a funny kind of feeling we'll be coming back again next year. Cause I've been all around this great big world and I can't think of anywhere else I'd rather go to. Yankovic in the biggest ball of twine in Minnesota from his latest album UHF and other stuff, number five on the Funny Five. Number four has to do with something that Al and his little family might be looking for along the roadside. Hello, this is Tom Toilette for Porta Potty 6. Once again, it's time to load up the old lady and all your little rug jumpers, head out on that open road, and cram enough old fashioned adventure and excitement into one week to last you a whole year. Well, there frequently comes a time on that long stretch of rural American highway when the next gas station or eating place is just a little too far away to be the answer to nature's call. It's times like this when the sight of a porta potty six will bring a smile of relief to you and the members of your family about to burst with precipitation, uh, anticipation. Yeah. It only takes 25 cents at most porta potty sixes across this great nation to open the door to happiness and relief. Now, when your destination is about reached and it's almost time to move in on your relatives, it's always a good idea to stop at porta potty six first and save everyone the embarrassment of charging in and plugging up the whole works at grandma and grandpa's house. Well, I see my time's about up. So like they always say, when it's early in the summer and the corn's too short, there's always a porta potty six nearby. So long for now. I'm Tom Toilette, and we'll leave the lids up for you. A lot of calls to bring back that funny commercial made and sent to me by Terry Morgan of Cuba City, Wisconsin. Porta Potty 6 wound up number four on this week's Funny Five. Number three is yet another newcomer to the countdown, and it's next. I ate a pizza with anchovies and then went around the house to see how the family would react to my breath. My mother was very uncooperative. Ooh, you step one foot in this room and I'll pull your arms off. My dog wasn't much better. <laughs> then I took a Clorette's. Only Clorets has Actazol with chlorophyll to get rid of bad breath fast. My mother came running out of her room, grabbed me and said, Such a good boy, let me clean your room. <laughs> Clorets gets rid of bad breath fast. I'm making my summation in court today. <clears throat> now I've got a sore throat, cough, and stuffy nose. On my way to the halls of justice, I think I'll stop in the halls of medicine. The halls of medicine. Hall's cough suppressant tablets. Used as directed, Hall's mentholiptus soothes a sore throat, helps stop a cough. And Hall's vapor action formula makes a stuffy nose feel clearer fast. Hall's cough suppressant tablets. The halls of medicine. Try ice blue flavor, too. 
Sounds like a call for number three. One nine hundred bananas. This is Donnie Lear, and I'm calling from Fort Worth, Texas, and I'll get down with KZEW ninety eight FM. And I would like to hear who put the booger on my beer mug. You know, there are so many important questions that confront a man during his lifetime, such as, why am I here? Where did I come from? Where am I going? And most important... Who put the booger on my beer mug When I was dancing with my kushka Who put the booger on my beer mug I'm gonna knock him in the head was it Frankie Jedlikowski? No, 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 it wasn't him. I always thought he had it in for me. Ever since the time when we was little kids, I took this bike and threw it in the creek. Do, 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 do. Who put the booger on my beer mug when I was dancing with my tushka? Who put the booger on my beer mug? I'm gonna knock him in the head. Was it Stasha Kazarinsky? No, 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 it wasn't him. He always was the joker of the pack. But the big joke was on him when I ran off with his girl. And he wound up with chubby Stella Pratt. Do, 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 do. Who put the booger on my beer mug? When I was dancing with my tushka. Who put the booger on my beer mug? I'm gonna knock him in the head. Put the booger on my beer mug When I was dancing with my tushka Who put the booger on my beer mug I'm gonna knock him in the head I'm gonna knock him in the head Booger on my beer mug. Sneaky Pete Rizzo from Texas A&M with number three on the Funny Five, which brings us to number two. It's an old song. Now, we played a new version of it earlier this year, which was quite popular, but now a whole lot of people want to hear the original. Well, technically this is not the original, but it's by far the most famous version. Number two this week, let's sing along with Chuck Berry. Well, in that case, he gives us one more to do. In that case, we got to... We got to do our alma mater, we must do our alma mater. When I was a little bitty boy, my grandmother bought me a cute little toy. Silver bells hanging on a string, she told me it was my ding a ling a ling o took me to grammar school but I stopped off in the vestibule every time that bell would ring catch me playing with my ding a ling a ling -a. You know what I heard? I heard, I hear two girls over here singing in harmony. That's all right, honey. This is a free country. Live like you want to live, baby. Yeah. Ain't nobody going to knock it, darling. Mm-mm. Yeah, freedom. Yes, sir. There's one guy right over here singing mine, too. That's all right, brother. Yes, sir. You got a right, baby. Ain't nobody going to bother you. Okay. Once I was climbing the garden wall, I slipped and had a terrible fall. I fell so hard I heard bells ring, but held on to my ding a ling 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 Man, them snappers all around my feet. Show sure was hard swimming across that thing with both hands holding my baby. I 
sing. It's a beautiful little song. Really, I do. And guess what? Everybody's still not singing. There's a few right down front here that's not singing. We're going to dedicate this verse to those who will not sing. Yes, sir. Mmm, this here song, it ain't so sad. The cutest little song you ever had. Those of you who will not sing, you must be playing with your own ding a ling Number two on the Dr. Demento Funny Five, which means, guess what? Number one is next. I'm about to deliver a lecture on Shakespeare. Hard enough to deal with my students, much less a stuffy dose, sore throat, and cough. Perhaps these sacred halls can lead me to the halls of medicine. The halls of medicine. Hall's cough suppressant tablets. Used as directed, Hall's mentholiptus soothes a sore throat, helps stop a cough. And Hall's vapor action formula makes a stuffy nose feel clearer fast. Hall's cough suppressant tablets. The halls of medicine. Try cherry flavor, too. I ate a slice of garlic bread, and then I boarded a bus to see how my fellow passengers would react to my breath. Oh, let me off! Let me off! The bus driver was the only one who'd speak to me. Okay, lady, out of the bus. Then I took a Clorex. Only Clorex has Actazole with chlorophyll to get rid of bad breath fast. An unusually attractive man got on then and walked up to me and said, Is the seat next to you taken? Clorex gets rid of bad breath fast.
Well, looks like that one just floated right back to the top, as it often does. On the Funny Five, Barnes and Barnes with number one fish heads. I'll be right back with a word about next week's show. I ate a hamburger smothered with onions, and then I went around the office to see how people would react to my breath. There was no mistake how my secretary felt. That does it. I quit. The accounting department saw me coming and took off for the billing department. Then I took a Chlorets. Only Chlorets has Actazole with chlorophyll to get rid of bad breath fast. When my secretary saw me again, she rushed up to me and said, Hi, I'm back. Want me to type something? How about I make you some copies? How many copies do you want? Need coffee? Chlorets gets rid of bad breath fast. I've got a stuffy nose, a sore throat, a bad cough, and a big game tomorrow. If I'm going to make it to the Football Hall of Fame, first I better go to the Halls of Medicine. The Halls of Medicine. Halls Cough Suppressant Tablets. Used as directed, Halls Mentholiptus soothes a sore throat, helps stop a cough, and Halls Vapor Action Formula makes a stuffy nose feel clearer fast. Halls Cough Suppressant Tablets. The Halls of Medicine. Try Spearmint Flavor, too. Dr. D, once again, next week, along with a whole bunch of your requests, we'll have a special feature about kids. Nice kids, nasty kids, and all sorts of demented kids. Haven't quite put it all together yet, but it seems likely we'll hear from Spike Jones, Robin Williams, and lots more. Meanwhile, don't forget you can call in your requests anytime at 1-900-BANANAS. One twenty-five for the first minute, 95 cents for each additional. Robert Young is the associate producer of the Dr. Demento Show. Chris Lindsley is our engineer. Bob Ebersall, production assistant, with research by Warren Devenham. The Dr. Demento Show is a weekly presentation of the Westwood One Radio Network. Executive producer, Norm Pattis. Thanks for listening. Till next time, don't forget to stay demented. <laughs>